So our next speaker is a very lucky lady in front of me right now, Alisa. Um, she's been working with bots since the early days of Microsoft Bot Frameworks release, and she's a fi world finalist in Microsoft Image Cup, which uh, has published, um, and she has published multiple bots uh, publicly today. And so uh, currently she's working as a tech evangelist. Did I pronounce it? <laughs> evangelist with Microsoft, and um, she's here to show you about the future and the applications of chatbots and how to implement it in the Microsoft Bot framework. Um, let's put our hands together and welcome Alisa. Uh, that's on Twitter. I know if anyone uses Twitter, just tweet me any questions if you have any. Um, so I just want to sort of get a feel of the crowd. How many of you have a technical background? Okay. Um, wait, how many of you have actually like heard me talk before? Okay, that's good. <laughs> so I can, so it won't be a repeat for everyone. Cool. So um, it's a fact that we want instant interaction. So if, if we want to maybe make a doctor appointment or book a restaurant, we want it done immediately. Okay, we're getting more impatient and if a web if a website has really bad UI, we're not gonna like stick around and try and figure out a way. So for businesses to engage customers, which is us, um, they need to provide us like the fastest way to get something done, um, a way that is uh, easily accessible in US or mobile. And then lastly, um, a way that's natural for us to uh, talk to and get things done. So the way that a lot of businesses do this right now is using apps. Now, almost every business out there has an app. Uh, if you think about it, it's like H&M, Domino's Pizza, Subway, and they all help us do stuff like maybe um, collect loyalty points or um, give feedback like the McDonald's one. But, can one person have every app? So how many people here have uh, 20 to 30 apps? So to give you an idea, 20 apps is about one page. 30 to 40? 40 to 50? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> cool. So, the average smartphone user has 26 apps. And if you think about it, in the more in the Western countries and Asian countries, it's about thirty to forty. Um, and so the thing is that the majority of people's time, so eighty-four percent of people's time, is actually spent only just using five apps that they've installed on the app store. So if you think about it, there's like a select few apps that you usually use more often, like maybe Spotify or um, maybe Messenger. So if people aren't spending their time on these apps anymore, where are they going to? And the answer is to, mess to messaging apps. And I think it's a uh, whole true for a lot of us that we're spending more time in WhatsApp than like looking through our Facebook newsfeed. Uh, so there are these different ones like Messenger, Telegram, Viber, and things like that. And in fact, there are 3 billion user, uh, monthly active users on the big four messaging apps, which is WeChat, uh, WhatsApp, Viber, and Facebook Messenger. Um, so imagine if businesses had the ability to sort of go on these platforms and engage with uh, more people. Like imagine how much more reach they would have. And the thing is that now they can with bots. And bots are basically machines that we speak to to get stuff done. Uh, so the simplest instance of bots are these three things. Um, so I'm sure you guys recognize some of these. It's uh, Siri, Cortana, and Google Now. And they help us get things done. 
So chat platforms that already have bots are um, some of these ones that recently released their bot platforms. And in terms of bots out there right now, what's the usage like? Uh, this is kind of my personal opinion on um, the industries where bots will actually take off. So service, uh, you can now order burgers through the Burger King app. I'm not sure if it's only in America at the moment, but yeah. And then celebrities, uh, Red Fool from, from LMFAO actually has an official bot you can talk to. Um, and then there's finance. Uh, using the American Express bot, you can see uh, what you've been spending on and things like that. And then healthcare, uh, you can ask like the I do a healthcare bot um, what kind of symptoms you have and it'll tell you maybe what kind, what you're suffering from. And lastly, legal. So do not pay is an app that has uh, helped help uh, waive 160,000 parking tickets in the UK. And you talk to it, you tell it your problem, like maybe the button warden didn't blah blah blah. And then it basically writes you a whole letter that you send back to the council. And then it helps you wave it. <laughs> or like it gives you a chance to wave it. So that's pretty cool. But the price for the most, most mature bot ecosystem actually goes to WeChat. And WeChat is something that's mostly used in China. Uh, WeChat bots have like all sorts of different um, ways of interacting with the bot. So it's not just being able to talk to the bot, but it's also, uh, the bot can also show you interfaces like this to make your um, experience even better. And I'm gonna show you a video of what it looks like when bots are uh, very dominant. Uh, WeChat is an example of, uh, for lack of a better word, a super app. It's a Swiss army knife that basically does everything for you. It's your WhatsApp, Facebook, Skype, and Uber. It's your Amazon, Instagram, Venmo, and Tinder. But it's other things we don't even have apps for. There are hospitals that have built out whole appointment booking systems. There are investment services. There are even heat maps that show how crowded a place is, be it your favorite shopping mall or a popular tourist site. The list of services goes on basically forever. But it's not the variety of things you can do on WeChat that makes it so powerful. It's the fact that they're all in one app. So why does that matter? Hypothetically, imagine you're sitting at home and one day you notice your cord is dirty. You open WeChat, hit a few buttons, and a few hours later, a man shows up at your door with some shampoo and a big bag. Your dog gets cleaned and he looks for you. You take a photo, you share it with your friends, and tag the dog clean the business. You haven't left the app. Your friend who likes Hello Kitty and works a boring office job is slacking off at work and looking at WeChat. She sees the photo of your clean corgi. She decides she wants her poodle clean. She clicks the tag on your photo and orders the same service. Within seconds, the man with the big vacuum is on his way to her house. She pays him, and he's happy because he got paid instantly on WeChat. She starts chatting with you to thank you. Neither of you have left the app. While chatting, she tells you about a new hip noodle joint. She says, you have to come. It's a schlep, but you accept. She orders food while still at her desk. You order a taxi. She pays for the food. On the way to her house, the man with the big vacuum invests the money he earned from both of you into a wealth management product that's probably a little too risky. Neither of you nor the man with the big vacuum have left the end. Both of you arrive and the app tells the kitchen you're there. Your WeChat profile photo pops up on the wall. It's an old photo from the year you had that weird part in your hair. Of course she makes a comment. Your food is served. You notice your meat is a bit overcooked, so you snap a photo and post a disparaging restaurant review. You're already on your phone, and you remember you still owe your friend money because she paid to transfer her money. Neither of you, the man with the big vacuum, nor the restaurant have left the app. At the restaurant, there are no menus, there are no waiters, there is no cashier. There is only WeChat. Yep, so that's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I always think it's amazing every time I see this video. So that's what it looks like when businesses are able to get their bots onto these um, conversational platforms. And now I'm going to do two demos. Uh, so who's heard of Skyscanner here? Okay, cool. So quite a few of you. Uh, Skyscanner is a service that lets you look for cheap flights. Uh, so I'll just show you it. If I go... Today? 
basically took out my intent and entities so it knows that I'm flying from like just from analyzing my natural language it knows that I'm flying, flying from Auckland to uh, sorry from Singapore to Auckland December 9 and coming back December 15 uh, so it's just gonna go and look for any flights for me and it should reply quite soon So this bot is an official bot by Skyscanner, which is pretty cool. And as you can see, it gives me some um, options whether I want cheaper flights or faster flights. And um, I hate stopovers, so let's show the top five shorter flights. Yeah, and then it shows me like a bunch of different um, flights that are shorter. And then I can just go ahead and book or set price alerts to alert me whenever there's price increase on the flights. Yeah, so that's one example of a um, sort of travel agent service kind of bot. And the second bot that I'm going to show you show you is one that I built. So it's a bit of a um, shameless plug, but mine. Oh look, last uncle messaged me. Why did he say all you got Okay. <laughs> okay. So um. I'm just gonna Okay, so how many of you have QR apps? QR apps? Okay. I use WeChat. Oh, you so use WeChat to do it? Okay. So sometimes uh, there's QR codes, but then you don't have a QR app, and it's really annoying because you don't actually know what it says. So I built this bot that you can send the QR code to, and it will tell you what the link is. And I'm just going to send it a photo from my phone. I'm just looking for a QR photo in my phone. There should be one. Um, all right, found it. Okay, so I basically just sent it, sent it from my phone. Yeah. So as you can see, it says give me a moment and analyze, analyze your image, and then it gives me back the link for the app. So with that, I can now delete that QR app that is just taking extra space. Um, okay. So does anyone want to guess? What these two bots were built using? Yes? Microsoft Bot Framework. Oh, yes! Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm gonna pretend to be really surprised at that. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, oh my god, it's a Microsoft Bot Framework. And um, the Bot Framework gives you everything you need to build intelligent bots to interact with your users. Um, so that's like a pizza bot kind of use case where you order pizzas through the bot. Now the bot framework has three main components. So the first is um, bot builder SDKs. So for you techies out there, um, you can build it using Node.js or C Sharp. But if, you, if your main language isn't those two languages, you can also use other languages and then use an API to interface with the bot connector. Um, so the second component is the bot connector and it, it allows you to write your bot once and then connect it to all sorts of different channels. So not just Facebook, but also Skype, Telegram, um, Slack, whatever you want. And lastly, the bot directory, which is like your app store for bots. So the bot builder lets you build powerful conversations. and. Um, it's basically based on dialogues, which are building blocks to build a conversation. And there's various dialogue types, so like prompts, form flow, and NLP. And I'll just show you some examples of that. Um, just one. Uh, okay, 
So this one is um, a board where you can get news and then, uh, say uh, get top news. It's going to come back and ask. Um, I'm on free care web app because I'm cheapskate, so it <laughs> takes a while to wake up. Okay, ask me which category you would like. Uh, so I can go and uh, pick technology. So this is an example of a prompt dialog. And then, as you can see, it gives me all the top news in technology today. And I can maybe click on the button and say, give me a short snippet of the bot. Oh, sorry, of the piece of news. And then it gives me a short snippet that I can read from. So there's many different ways of interacting with it. And the form flow bot is basically like um, back and forth conversation. So this is a restaurant booking bot. And if I say, um, make me a booking for tomorrow. <laughs> And these bots are also built using Microsoft Word Framework. So it asks me, I need some details. So it knows that I'm making the booking for tomorrow, and it asks me what's my preferred time. So I'll say 6 p.m. The name. And this is almost like filling out a form, but in a more conversational way, so you don't have to like ring in and you know, just how many people will there be? So it basically just goes back and forth like that. And lastly, um, NLP dialogues is like what Abhilash uh, showed just now. So using natural language processing to talk to the users. And Microsoft has a NLP tool called Lewis as well that um, helps you do natural language processing. Uh, yeah, so I said earlier, if, you're not, if you don't really use C Sharp or Node.js, you can always use these other languages to um, use the bot. Okay, so secondly, the bot connector that lets you write once and run everywhere. Um, so it's like, these are all the different channels that you can uh, connect your bot to. So you can even put it on your own website once you've written it. It's not just limited to Facebook Messenger. Uh, I think Skype Teams is in there as well, but it doesn't show up there. Uh, so I'll show you the dashboard. Um, so this is the dashboard where I manage I manage everything to do with my bot, and I can um, sort of choose what channels that what choose what kind of channels I want it on. So I currently have it on Telegram, Skype, Facebook Messenger, and I can see the issues that it has and um, try chatting with it over here just to test it. Yeah, so that's um, bot management, and then uh, lastly the bot directory. So this is the bot directory, and as you can see, these are all the bots that uh, um, I can... It's like a search engine for bots, basically. So if I look into this one... Uh, yeah, so it's built using the bot framework, and it's also... It has a Skype channel, and I can just add to Skype and start talking to it. So if we look at another one, maybe main bot. Because who doesn't know names? It has it on all these channels, and I can start talking to it on any of them. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna do a demo. Actually, I was gonna use Lewis. It's funny because he used Wit to do the demo. Uh, so this. Lewis tool is actually just the NLP part of the bot. Um, so if I go new application, and I'll name it. I'll just recreate the restaurant bot. Okay, so this is like um, the Microsoft version of with AI. So if I add intent here and say um, make booking, an example utterance can be hey. 
And then I can label it with an intent. So make booking and then submit it. Um, entities I can also add uh, and I'll call this, oh wait, sorry. There's like pre-built entities. So if I look for the date time entity, it will automatically detect whenever I write date times in my utterance. So I'll need to train it. So the train button is like this small one in the bottom left. And then if I say, uh, yeah, so it can automatically detect like a date time within what I just said. Um, because there's already like preview entities, and I'll submit that as well. Um, now one thing you've got to be careful of is that you need to tell the bot what is not correct as well. So if I say um, the sky is blue, then I'll label it as none. So I'm telling the bot that the sky is blue doesn't mean anything to it. So if I say ha ha ha, <laughs> I need to tell it that it doesn't mean anything. Or like, you're bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then if I go to this uh, thing called phrase list features down the bottom left, I can name this feature uh, booking. And then I can type in all the synonyms to do with booking. So booking, appointment, um, what else is there? Uh, reservation. Yeah, reservation, maybe table. And then go save. So if anyone says anything like a uh, table, oh wait, I was going to treat it first. Yeah. So if anyone says something like table for five, then it knows that it's under make booking. So these are just ways to help train your bot as well. Yeah. Okay. Um. Just <coughs> So in terms of where to get started, uh, I recommend you should go to the docs.botframework.com and that is basically gives you like a step-by-step -step instruction on how to get started with the Microsoft Bot Framework. Um, it's not as hard as you think it is, to be honest. It's actually quite easy to get started and set up your bot. Um, this is one of my favorite places for resources to do with um, Bot Framework. And then lastly, I recommend that you join the SG Bots Facebook group. Um, it's like a community of bot enthusiasts in Singapore. Uh, I think you can type sgbots.com and it should take you to the Facebook group. Yeah, so you can put any questions that you want on there and just yeah, go for it. Okay, and that's pretty much all I have. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. This one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lisa, can I have a question? Uh, yeah. So for the Microsoft Bot Framework, is it free for use or do you have to pay for using the um, system? So there's like a free tier. Actually no, the Bot Framework itself is free isn't it, to use. And then um, in terms of the natural language understanding one, I think it's um, 10,000 free calls a month and then you have to pay after that. Yeah, I'm not sure about the payment um, payment model is for the other natural language tools. Uh, but the bot framework itself is free to use. Yeah, it's just the natural language engine that is expensive. Well, not expensive, but like, <laughs> yeah. Good question. How many, how many languages does it use? Oh, seven languages at the moment. But what you can do is, if you are doing an unsupported language, right? You do you use a translator API to translate it to into a supported language and then put it through Lewis. So it has to be a unicode language. Sorry? It has to be a unicode language or can any language to transfer that? Um so, sorry, can you So for example it's Arabic. Oh Arabic, yeah. So you use a translator API to translate it from Arabic to like something that Lewis supports, maybe like English I don't know. Yeah. And then you put it through this. Yeah. And it doesn't have to translate it perfectly. As long as it roughly gets it, like um, I want booking, Louis will understand it. Okay. Yeah. Oh 
yes, I think they, yeah, can clarify a bit. Thank you so much, Elisa, for this introduction to Microsoft Bot Framework. We'll have a short Q&A session at the end of the um, session, and then we'll have all three speakers here for you to question them. Before.